for murder and kidnapping suspect Adam Mays is over. The two missing girls with him are safe. Mays killed himself last night in Alpine, Mississippi after police caught up with him. Mark Strassman is at the scene and brings us up to date now. Mark, good morning to you. Good morning to you, uh, Gail and Charlie. This manhunt had uh, two goals all along. It bring home the two girls alive and get at a maze however necessary. It did both. And success came last night behind this church with a tip, a search, and a gunshot. We are very relieved uh, at this event here tonight. We have two little girls that we can return to Tennessee to their families. The hunt for Adam Mays came to a dramatic end last night, two weeks after he disappeared with 12-year-old Alexandria Bain and her 8-year-old sister Kalia. Authorities, acting on a tip, closed in on the three in a heavily wooded area behind this small Mississippi church. Alexandria was spotted first, then Mays. Officers immediately issued commands to Adam Mays to show his hands. Mays pulled a semi-automatic pistol from his waistband and shot himself in the head. Emergency responders brought the fugitive back to life twice before he died at a local hospital. The girls were suffering from exposure, dehydration, and poison ivy, and taken in for treatment as a precaution. Their ordeal ended just three miles from Mays' home, where the bodies of their mother, Joanne, and sister, Adrienne, were found last Saturday. Mays' wife, Teresa, told police he killed them so he could take the girls. It's believed Mays, considered a close family friend of the Baines, thought he was their father. The FBI has crossed Mays off its most wanted list, and his wife and mother are behind bars, charged in connection with the case. But officials warn the investigation is still far from over. And if we determine that there was any person or persons uh, that assisted Adam Mays uh, while he was on the run and with these girls, we plan on arresting and prosecuting them. When searchers first spotted Mays, they said they ordered him repeatedly to surrender. Instead, he pulled out a 9mm from his waistband and shot himself in the head. The two girls were lying on the ground nearby. And Charlie and Gail, all of this was just one day after Mays was added to the list of America's 10 most wanted. Mark Sprossman in Alpine, Mississippi. Now the latest on the undercover agent who stopped the latest Al-Qaeda bomb plot. Officials say he could have spent another week or two <clears throat> collecting information on Al-Qaeda if his cover had not been blown. And Congress wants to know who did that by revealing the plot to bomb an airliner headed for the United States. Nancy Cordes is on Capitol Hill. Nancy, hello to you. Gail, good morning to you. And congressional leaders who are being regularly briefed on this plot are furious about the leak. They say it put lives at risk, it hurt the operation, and may have tipped off al-Qaeda to U.S. intelligence methods. The operation involved a double agent who had infiltrated al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, and it was still underway when someone leaked details to the Associated Press. Why would you leak something like this? What do you have to gain from it? Senator Joe Lieberman and other congressional leaders met behind closed doors Thursday with intelligence officials. They were told the leak forced agents to wrap up the operation early and put others involved at risk. This isn't the ordinary leak where you talk about who Mitt Romney's going to pick for vice president or uh, how John Boehner is going to support a highway bill or what Nancy Pelosi. We're talking about life and death here. House Homeland Security Committee Chairman Peter King called the leaker a criminal. This was one of the most sophisticated intelligence operations that we've ever run. We were having access to extremely vital information and uh, such a close, such a small universe of people knew about it. The Associated Press held off on running its story until after U.S. officials retrieved the non-metallic device at the center of the foiled Al-Qaeda plot. It's an upgraded version of the underwear bomb that this would-be terrorist tried to ignite on a Northwest flight in 2009. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta said the leak may make it more difficult to recruit foreign individuals to provide intelligence. When these leaks take place, uh, I can't tell you uh, how much they damage our ability to be able to, uh, to pursue our, our intelligence efforts. There is always the possibility that the leak came from one of our foreign partners in this operation. The British were involved, the Saudis were involved, and yesterday reports surfaced that a British intelligence officer may have been the double agent. Nancy Cordes, thank you so much. With us now, John Miller, senior correspondent and former deputy director of national intelligence. Good morning. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, where do you think this leak investigation will go? Well, right now it's sitting 
on a desk in the Department of Justice. They have a complex criteria they have to go through. Was it classified information? Would the leaking have been criminal? I think quickly they'll determine the answer would be yes and yes, mm -hmm. especially with the pressure from Congress. But when it's done sitting there, uh, it'll move across the street to the FBI. It'll go to the Counterintelligence Division, mm -hmm. and they will start down the road of who were the people who were read into the operation, mm -hmm. Who were the people they told? And that can get pretty rough. I mean, that can be people hauled into grand juries. That can mm -hmm. be people put on polygraphs. Um, so but they will. They will probably. They will probably turn the heat up. How John, angry were they over the fact? How angry were they over the fact uh, that they may have lost over the two weeks before uh, a lot of very good information? You know, Charlie, this was a week of mixed emotions for the people on the operations side. Um, you know, the, the, the great joy that comes with closing out an operation where you took a plot that was going to kill people and shut it down. But, you know, the bittersweet side of this leaked out too soon, we could have done more, and we don't know what we could have accomplished with a little more time. But I would think, John, that because the circle is so small about who knew about it, it, it will not be hard to find out who was the leak. Is that not true? You know, Washington can be a hall of mirrors. It's a town where information is power. And, you know, the, the small circle of people who knew is usually bigger than we than think we it know. is. Okay, and since the leak is out, do you think it's only a matter of time before we know who he is? I think we're going to get that. And okay. I think we're I not going to get it from a government leak. Hmm. I mean, I think that's, where, that's the bright line, is protecting the actual identity of an informant more than the existence. But I think... Al-Qaeda of the Arabian Peninsula, they know who he is now. Yes. And they probably have his picture. They do publish a magazine. And I suspect fairly soon they'll have their own story about the informant and their own take on it, which um, will be pretty interesting. So there'll be a real effort to protect him. Yeah, but I mean, he's going to be somewhere else with his family, with a new identity and a big pile of cash. Um, I think he'll be all right. Great to see you. Thank you. Nice too. to see you. I'm now to show you some of this morning's headlines from around the globe. USA Today says the government is set to release new standards for science education. A report released Thursday showed eighth graders' knowledge of basic science rose slightly last year. Just 32% of them rated proficient or above. And have you read about the ancient Mayan prediction that the world will end later this year? The New York Times reports that scientists have discovered an ancient Mayan calendar in northeastern Guatemala. The calendar was on a wall buried in a house. It dates back to 8013. It says nothing about the world ending. Britain's Telegraph shows us a World War II British fighter plane found frozen in time in the Sahara des Desert. The Kitty Hawk P-40 crashed in 1942 and has remained untouched. There are plans to retrieve the plane and put it in a museum. And the Houston Chronicle looks at a record growth in the number of foreign-born residents in America. According to the latest census data, that number grew by 9 million between 2000 and 2010. Nearly 13 percent of the population is foreign-born. The most, that's the most rather, in nearly a century. It is now 719. It's time for your first check of your local weather. Thank you, Gail, and good morning, everybody. A bright and beautiful.